Hey guys, Mr. B here, and this video is going to be going over the practice problems for chapter 20, section 2 on electric current. So let's begin here with number one. It says, what is electric current? So from the chapter, um, one of the things that was brought up was that an electric current is very similar to a current of water, like in a river or maybe in a hose that's flowing out. And it's essentially just a continuous movement of charge that moves and just keeps on going. Okay, So we can say that electric current is a... Continu or I'm gonna say, let's, let's type it this way. Electric current is a continuous flow of electric charge. I did not write continuous correctly. There we go. All right. Um, oops, sorry. Number two, um, use the diagram from before to answer the following question. Electrons flow in the wire from a blank terminal to a blank terminal. All right, so the diagram I'm pretty sure that they're referring to is the um, picture of the flashlight with the light bulb uh, and the, the batteries. So um, in this diagram, we see that the charges are going from the positive terminal to the negative terminal. Okay, so in our answer here, we're going to have that electrons flow in the wire from a positive terminal. Positive terminal to a negative terminal. And again, we'll make sure this is in red. There we go. All right. Um, number four. Okay, it should be number three. <laughs> for some reason, we skipped number three. Anyway, number four. Um, what is an electrical conductor? All right, so in this chapter section, we talked about different types of materials. Conductors are one type, and that is a material that allows electric charge to flow through it very easily. So we can say that, um, what is an electrical conductor? So we can say an electrical conductor is a material that allows electric charge to flow through it easily. Um, number five, what is an electrical insulator? Well, pretty much the exact opposite of an electrical conductor. So rather than a material that will allow charge to flow through it easily, we now have a material that does not allow charge to flow through it easily. So we can say an electrical insulator is a material, no, oh, we can type here, is a material that does not allow electric charge to flow through it easily. Okay, um, number six, true or false, metals are good conductors. Yeah, I think pretty much all of us know that answer. Uh, is, yeah, true, for sure. Metals are great electrical conductors, for the most part. Um, there actually are some metals that are not super good electrical conductors, but for the most part, yeah, most metals are good electrical conductors. All right, um, match each material to the category of a conductor or insulator. Okay, so number seven, we have copper. All right, well, we know that copper is a metal, and uh, metals are great electrical conductors, so this one is going to be A, Oh, if we can type here, it's going to be A, conductor. Um, number eight, plastic. All right, so plastic is not a great conductor. It is a good insulator, however, though. Um, this is the reason why most plastics are covered around, you know, electrical conductors. That way they don't leak out electric charge. Um, number nine, rubber. Most of us probably know this also is a very good insulator. This is why most of our wires are coated in rubber. So that way the, uh, the electric charge doesn't get out of the wire and go into places we don't want it to go. Um, number 10, silver. So silver is a metal and metals just like copper are good at conducting electricity. So this one is definitely going to be A, a conductor. And then number 11, wood. Uh, wood is not a good conductor. Um, if you guys have ever seen or you know, heard of lightning hitting a tree, uh, the reason why it starts on fire and explodes <laughs> is because as the charge from the lightning tries to travel through the wood, uh, there's a lot of friction, there's a lot of resistance, and it heats up. And as the wood gets hotter, of course, it starts on fire because wood is flammable, and as it gets hot, it, it ignites, and there you go, right? So if wood was a good conductor and trees got hit by lightning, they would not start on fire. In fact, they probably would be just fine, but... Uh, that's, that's not what happens. So, All right, number 12, circle the letter of each factor that affects a material's resistance. Okay, so there were three things in this chapter section that was mentioned when it came to resistance. Okay, So remember, resistance is like how much friction there is inside of a wire. So there's three things that can affect how much friction there is. Okay, One is its length. The longer the wire, 
the more friction there is because there's more material that the charges have to flow through. So that will affect its resistance. Okay, again, the amount of friction that is inside of it. So A, that's one factor. B, it's temperature. Another factor. Okay, so again, remember, at room temperature, you know, atoms are kind of moving around, vibrating like this. As things get hot, those atoms are going to be bouncing around and moving like this a lot more. So there's more friction because it's more difficult to move your way through a material when you've got stuff constantly getting in your way and, and hitting you. Versus if the temperature is low and it's cold, rather than the objects going like this, they're going to be barely moving, if at all, and they're going to be just kind of sitting in place, in which case it's a lot easier to move your way through material. So there's less friction, there's less resistance, and it makes it easier. So temperature is another factor that is going to affect your resistance. Um, it's velocity. I don't know what a material's velocity will have to do with electrical resistance, so I'm going to say that that's probably not one. And then D, thickness. That also is another factor, okay? So again, think of a tube, and or think of a straw, and you're trying to, let's say you're, you have a straw, and you're trying to like drink a shake or a malt through your straw. If you ever had a malt that's really thick, right, and you try to drink it through a straw, it's really difficult because there's like chunks, and it kind of gets stuck, and you got to suck really hard, and you might get some out of there, but it, you usually got to eat with a spoon. Versus if you have a really big, thick straw, it's a lot easier to pull that malt through it because there's more space for stuff to go through. So the thickness will also have an impact on how much resistance there is. The thinner a material, the thinner the tube, the thinner the wire, the more friction there is because there's not a whole lot of space to move. But the thicker the wire, the, the less friction there is because you have more space to move and it's easier to move through. So thickness is also a factor that will affect your resistance. The thicker the wire, the better. All right, number 13, true or false, three common voltage sources are batteries, solar cells, and generators. Um, so that is directly from the notes, uh, and yeah, that is true. Those are some of the, the main ways that we can create a voltage is either having some batteries. Um, solar cells, of course, are going to create energy from the sun, which then we can create a voltage that way, or generators, of course, will produce um, energy through friction or, or other means, um, and then that will create a voltage. So, All right, last two questions, or last three questions here. Number 14, true or false? According to Ohm's law, the voltage in a circuit equals the product of the energy and the resistance. Okay, so basically what this is saying is, and let me, let me type this equation out so they can understand. So this is saying that voltage in a circuit is going to be equal to the product, product is like an answer to a multiplication problem, okay? So the energy times the resistance. So this is what this, this question is saying, is that in Ohm's law, voltage is equal to energy times resistance. That's not true, okay? That's false. We know that that's not true because Ohm's law is, has nothing to do with energy. It has uh, things to do with current. So Ohm's law is not voltage equals energy times resistance. Ohm's law is voltage equals current times resistance. So I times R. Okay, remember that I stands for current. Even though I know it's it's an I, not a C, it does stand for current. Number 15, um, doubling the voltage in a circuit doubles the current if blank is held constant. Okay, so if you double the voltage in a circuit, right, that means you're increasing the amount of force that's pushing on the charges. You will double your current, meaning that they're going to be traveling faster. So you're going to have more of them going through the wire at a given time as long as your resistance is held constant. Remember that resistance is how much friction there is. So if you double your voltage and your resistance doesn't change, then yes, your current is going to go up too. But if you double your voltage and you also increase the resistance, then essentially you're just going to cancel out that voltage you just doubled because the resistance is going to slow things down again and then your current will essentially not change. So for this one, we are looking for resistance. Okay, You will double your current uh, the doubling the voltage in a circuit will double the current if the resistance is held constant. Last question, number 16, true or false, doubling the resistance in a circuit will half the current if voltage is held constant. That is true. Okay, So if we have a bunch of resistance, friction, and we double it, and the voltage doesn't change, then the current, again, which is how many charges are moving through a wire at any given time, is going to go down because we're increasing friction. So if we double the friction and we don't push on the charges any harder, then the current's gonna go down by half. So yes, that is true.
I'll put this in red and say that is true. All right, guys, so that is it for this problem, uh, this section of notes and these problems. Hopefully, again, that helps you understand a little bit more about voltage, resistance, and current, and all this stuff. But as always, if you have any questions, make sure that you reach out. Okay, send me an email. You can chat in class. Or if you ever want to do a one-on-one -on -one and do a bit of tutoring and some practice, we can do so that way. All right, that's it for this one. Thanks for watching. I'm Mr. B. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.